Hello and welcome to the Cisco Support Community. Today we present a live Ask the Expert event inside Cisco Live and Networkers Virtual. During the event today, our expert will be answering your questions on Cisco's wireless control system. My name is Daniel Gerson and I am the content manager for Cisco Live and Networkers Virtual here at Cisco. Our expert joining me today is Lucian Avramov, a technical leader in the network management group inside the San Jose TAC. Lucian holds a CCIE in routing and switching. Lucian will provide troubleshooting techniques and tips for Cisco's wireless control system, wireless LAN controller software, and location server. Welcome, Lucian. Thank you, Dan. Now I'd like to briefly outline the format for today's Ask the Expert event. Lucian will start with a short presentation on Cisco's wireless control system for the first 25 minutes of the program and then we will dive into the live question submissions for the remainder of the event. During our live presentation, you may submit a question to be answered by Lucian and a team of Cisco technical experts using the submit box on the left side of your console. Simply type your question and press submit. To see the latest questions and answers during today's presentation, be sure to click the refresh button just under the slides. You can scroll up to see the previous answers in the Q&A box. The team of technical experts is well versed in Cisco's wireless control system, so please start posting your questions now to give us the best chance of answering them. We'll be answer asking polling questions during this webcast, and we encourage you to participate by answering them. Now let's get started with today's event. We're going to start out today with a polling question. What part of Cisco's wireless control system are you more interested in learning about today? Database troubleshooting? Wireless control system and wireless LAN controller troubleshooting. Wireless control system and location server troubleshooting. Please take a moment and submit your answer. We'll get back to those results shortly. Now I'd like to hand the mic to Lucian, who will provide insight on Cisco's wireless control system. Thank you, Dan. So, um, Today's agenda. First, we're going to start by uh, an overview of WCS. We'll briefly talk about installation and upgrade as well. Then we'll move on and talk about logs, database, WCS common issues, and then we'll dig a little more into WCS and WLC troubleshooting as well as WCS and location server troubleshooting. So let's start with a WCS overview. Here, you can see your wireless LAN solution overview, and WCS is in the middle of this picture. So as you can see, you have different components that are in your, in your environment. You have WCS, you have your wireless LAN controller, you have your access points, you also have a location appliance, and you may also have, in certain cases, uh, Spectrum Expert, Navigator, or some third-party uh, applications that would talk to your location appliance. WCS, as you can see, talks with the controller over the SNMP protocol and talks over the location appliance using SOAP XML over HTTP or HTTPS regarding how you have configured it. Between the location appliance and the wireless controller, uh, there is the NMSP protocol that is being used for them to exchange data about the clients that are tracked. And of course, finally, between your access points and your controller, you're using either LWAP or CAPWAP protocol. Now, let's move to and talk about the WCS components. There's three main components in WCS. The first, the main one, is your web server, which is using Apache Tomcat. You also have a database engine, which is using a solid proprietary SQL database. And finally, for all the SNMP engine-related oper operations, it's a Java uh, module that talks with the web server. Now, moving on, let's, let's go ahead and, and, and see here all your port requirements for WCS so you're able to start your, your uh, software properly. Here, you will see two colors for the port numbers, black and red. The, those that are in red are the ones you may be able to change and configure, and the black ones are the standard ones which need to be open 
so WCS can start properly. Now let's go ahead and, and talk about installation and upgrade. First, prior you attempt any upgrade operation, there's two main things to do. The very first one is go ahead in the documentation and check what we call the release notes for your supported um, upgrade path. That will give you an idea about what hardware is supported, what software, and how you can upgrade your WCS from which version to which version. The second thing prior to, to do prior any upgrade is to make a backup of your database. So make sure you have a, a valid backup of your WCS and then go ahead and pursue your upgrade. The backup is basically a tar file and this tar file will contain not only the database but it's also going to contain a lot of other things such as your floor maps, the information about your controllers, your access point configuration, your event logs, um, all um, the MSC location server information such as IP address, credentials, and so on. And finally, it will also include the license file of your WCS. Again, make sure that you go through your software and hardware requirements that are on the release note prior to any installation or upgrade. How do you find the release notes? It's pretty simple. Just use the simplified URL, which is www.cisco.com forward slash go forward slash WCS. This is the WCS main page, and you will find all the documentation related to WCS there. For the release notes, just click on, the, to, on general information link, and I will take you there. Now, briefly, let's also mention, once you have installed WCS, how will you go ahead and start or stop your services? Well, there's two options. Either you have a Windows installation or you have a Linux installation. If you're running Windows, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just go under Start Program Files, go under your WCS uh, application links, and there you will, find, you will find the icons that will help you to do so. Um, you have the WCS status icon, which will tell you if your server is up or down, and then you have Start WCS and Stop WCS that can execute your, your, your services to start or stop. Under Linux, it's pretty much similar it's, it's going to be under your WCS installation folder, which I will call here WCS root towards this presentation. So it's in forward slash bin, and there you will find start WCS, stop WCS, or WCS status. Now let's go ahead and move and talk about the WCS logs. That's really an important part if you, if you consider troubleshooting and understanding how WCS works. First of all, where are your logs located? Well, in your installation folder of WCS forward slash WebNMS forward slash logs. There's, there's a few different types of logs that you will find. First off, you have the launch out that text. This file will tell you everything about your WCS startup, about the ports, about starting the Tomcat, about starting your database, and so on. You have the WCS-0.x log. This is the log that will rotate and the x will increment uh, over time. This contains your WCS running configuration. Anything that happens after a startup will be there. We have two files regarding database. One is for database messages, which is the solid message out. And one is for the database errors that may occur with uh, your, your solid um, database. This is the sole error that out. Finally, just for information purposes, you also have a version.txt that will tell you what is the latest version installed in your WCS. And your license file will be in the same folder and it will be called WCS with a number that LIC. This will be your license. You may have more than one if you have upgraded your your, your, your WCS functionality is over time. Now, how do you set the logs? Well, once you log in your, your UI of WCS, go under administration and logging options, and then you will get this screen where you can select, first of all, the modules 
where you want to enable logging for, I do recommend you to check all of them, except if your logs are really growing too fast. But in most of the cases, just enable all of them. All the boxes should be checked. And then there's the message level. Here you can see the message level. By default, it's going to be uh, as, uh, I believe, information. So you can go ahead and change that. And you can change that to trace. Now make sure you change it to trace to do some troubleshooting. Keep in mind to submit your changes with the Submit button once you're done. And just don't hit back on your browser. And once you do so, go ahead and reproduce your issue. Because once you change the logs to trace, they're not retroactive. So in other words, you won't see an event that happened prior to this before it was set to trace. On this page, you are also able to go ahead and download the logs. There's a download button where you, you can get a zip file that will have all the logs we just mentioned. So once you get the logs, you can read them. Now let's move forward and now talk about database, the WCS database. Now, as I said earlier, this is a solid relational database. And the database is located under WebNMS DB EvalKit standalone. The database is two things. It's going to be your database file, which is a file called solid.db. And it, it's also your transaction log files. Now, as any SQL database, you do need to have transaction log files in order to, to use your database file properly. They're numbered, and they're sol with a number.log. What is in the database? You're going to find quite a few things there the IP address and credentials for your controllers, the configuration of your controllers, the information about your location servers and configuration, the, anything about your network design, such as the relations between your math files, which will be uh, PNG files, and the explanation about what floor they're on, any customization about your maps, the walls, the thickness, and so forth, any obstacles that you may configure. This is stored in the database. You'll also have uh, information about your access points, such as the standalone access point configuration or any other access point data. It's stored there. Events, including alarms and notifications, and basically anything else you may think of in WCS except one thing, which is the client data that resides on a location server. Now, Let's go ahead and give you tools so you can yourself go and understand what the WCS database is and how you can do queries and get more under the hood if you're interested. First of all, you can do a dump of your database schema. What a dump of your database schema will do, it's going to basically give you an output with the tables in your WCS. So then you will, you will see what's under the hood there. And to do so, I ha you, you'll find in this slide here the command. Basically, you need to run a solddd command and output to a file. You'll use the, the TCP localhost 1315, which is the database port. And your username is DBA. DBA and then space, you specify your password to access the database. We'll cover the password in a little bit. You have two ways to do queries. Besides the dump, you can also do queries or make updates of your database as any SQL database. It's, it's going to be the same SQL commands that you will use. To make a query, you can do so from the UI or from the CLI. So from the UI, it's, it's the easiest to do. First off, go ahead and log in in WCS as a root user. Once you have logged in, then go ahead and change the URL for WCS. So Go back to the IP address level or name of your WCS, HTTP on forward slash, forward slash your WCS IP forward slash, and then you will change a little bit the output. So for a query, you will use web ACS forward slash pages forward slash admin forward slash DB query that GSP. And for updates, it's going to be a DB update that GSP that you run. This will give you an output with a little box where you can go ahead and type your SQL statement. 
you can also do queries or updates via CLI. And that will be using the stall SQL command, as mentioned here. For CLI operations, however, keep in mind that you will need to know the, the database password. When WCS is installed, there's a password that's set in a file, which is dboPTS.db, and the encrypted password is there. However, what you can do is you can use an utility to change the password for the database. And we'll be covering this utility in a little bit. The utility here is called dbAdmin. And you can see an output on this page where well, you can run the dbAdmin under Linux, and if you're under Windows, it's going to be dbAdmin.bat. But it's exactly the same thing. And, and as you will see there, it's dbAdmin, and you pass on, as a parameter, you pass on um, password. So dbAdmin space password space your password. For example, Cisco123, enter. That will change your dba password, and then you know that your user is DBA and the password is, password is Cisco123. Now, WCS database troubleshooting. Well, dbAdmin really is the utility not only to change the password, but also to give you ways to troubleshoot your database issues. First off, check schema. What is check schema for? Check schema, the goal is to check the, the schema of your database. You, you will use that to recover from database crashes, from log states, from corruption. And this will really help using transaction logs to, to go back and put back your, your database in a stable state with minimum losses. Defrag. This is more for data cleanup or improving your performance. You will run a defrag usually when your database is really large and, and uh, you would like to try to compress this and, and, and defragment, optimize your database for better performance. Now let's go ahead and, and talk a little bit about a few things to do when you have issues with WCS. One common is that you go ahead and experience a power outage. And when your server come back up, there's a corruption in your database. You see in lunchout.txt that your database server can't start properly. And, and you can't start any more WCS. Here's what I recommend you to do. First off, stop WCS. Make a backup of your WCS. And then start troubleshooting the database. Here, the first step I will recommend you is to do a database check schema. So go ahead, run a schema. You will see, we'll ask you, uh, it will tell you, do you want to continue? We'll check it, and at the end it will tell you database server successfully shut down after it's been fixed. Go ahead after that and start WCS, as this is not automatic. If this doesn't help, there's a few other things you can do. You can go ahead and, and clear the highest transactional log in your, um, in your database folder. So go ahead and delete that one and try again. See if you can start the WCS. If not, go ahead and delete all of them and see if that helps you. Of course, as, as next resort, you can contact the TAG for further assistance on your database. But make sure to contact us so we can troubleshoot this further so you don't get loss of data. Finally, you can reinitialize the database. However, this will lose all your information. To do so, it's db admin space reinit db. Keep in mind to be preventive and set up back background tasks in WCS. Go ahead and have automatic backups of your database. So just in case, you're always safe and you can roll back to a working version. And now I'll pass back the mic to Dan. Thanks, Lucian. Let's take a, a short break and review the results of our first polling question. OK, we can see here a landslide victory for WCS and WLC troubleshooting. Before we get back to the presentation, I'd like to take a moment and ask our second polling question. How familiar are you with wireless control system? You're using it every day. 
you've used it in the past, you've heard about it, or you've never really used it at all. Go ahead and submit your answer. Now let's get back to the presentation with Lucian. Thanks, Dan. Now let's go ahead and talk about WCS common issues. The, really the things you may see the most frequently in the field. Okay. Just having a few difficulties here. All right. Here it is. So first off, WCS doesn't start. What can you do? Start with lunchout.txt. Open this file and look for more information. Usually when WCS doesn't start, it's mainly related to ports issues. Some ports may not be open. Or you may experience an Apache Tomcat issue. Those are not that frequent. It could also be a uh, database issue. But mainly start with the ports and go ahead and read the launch out that text. Make sure that if you're using Windows, IIS services, and other web servers are disabled. Here's what really launch out that text will look in a good condition. It, it will check all the ports and give you an OK. And it will tell you step by step what it's doing. So you do see that it checks for ports. Then it will check for database. It will start the Apache server, then the TFTP, FTP, and Tomcat. Another issue you may face is you can't log in anymore as a root. And you'd like to do a password reset. Well, there's two scenarios. Are you using a WCS version which is older than 4.1? If you do, go ahead and, and contact the TAC so we can help you restoring your, your password. If you're using any later version, then here's the quick procedure to do so. Go ahead and stop WCS, then go in the bin folder and run your passwd shell or passwd.bat utility. The, the, the command here is um, in this slide, you'll find it. It's passwd space root dash user space your password. After this utility runs through, go ahead, start WCS back, and then you can run, you can log in with root and your password that you just set. So it's root, not root dash user, not to be confused. Licensing. The license file is issued to match the host name of your server. So anytime that you have uh, to move your WCS server to perhaps another server or you have a host name change, then you will have an issue with the license file. It will not longer work. Your license file, however, um, could be rehosted by the TAC if you, if you call in and ask to have your, your license file rehosted so you'll be able to use it on another device in, in part of your migration of WCS. As well, your license file have an IP, AP count, number of access points. And that's really how the licensing works on WCS. It's a text file. The, you can open it, but don't go ahead and change it because there's an MD5 checksum, and it will not work anymore if you try to increase your, your AP counts or change your feature sets. Lastly, you can download an eval uh, license for valid for 30 days from cisco.com forward slash go forward slash license. So you can go ahead, download the software, and try it. See how you like it. Another common issue in the field is WCS is running slow. How can I improve my performances? Well, first off, let's start with the release notes. Are you compliant with your hardware and software requirements? Uh, do you have all this equipment that you need to have? And, and, and the software requirements and hardware requirements are also by, by number of access points. So depending on high-end, middle-end, or low-end server, make sure that you have the minimum config required for what you have. 
Then also make sure that you don't have other server softwares installed that may use memory and, and resources. If you have an antivirus, don't scan the WCS folders. Your web server may not like it. You can run a defragment for your database to improve um, your, your database functionality. If your database is large, um, you can go ahead and do this. And then lastly, there's two things to do regarding uh, the performance. One is you can increase the memory for Java. And, and this is if you edit the start server file, which is in the bin folder. Again, it's either a .sh or .bat, regard, depending if you're on Linux or Windows. Go ahead and look for the parameter xmx1024, and go ahead and double that to 2 gig 2048 if you can, um, if you have enough um, RAM in your servers. So that will allocate the double memory for Java. Last thing you can do is, after you have increased your Java memory, you can start WCS in performance mode. To do so, it's again in your bin folder, and it's NMS admin utility. So NMS admin dot sh or bat again, space dash v space dash perf space start. This will start WCS in a performance mode. Now let's go ahead and talk about really the main the main interest here that we have today about WCS and WLC troubleshooting. There's three things, three main issues or three main tips here. The, the, the most common issue you'll see in the field is not to be able to add a controller to your WCS. Well, there's quite a few things to do and, and, and that's really the main the main thing uh, in WCS. First off, let's start with your version of your controller. Check the version of your controller and go ahead and, and look at the WCS release notes and, and look at um, if that version of WLC is supported. Also, check the release date if the version of your WLC was released after your WCS well, chances are that it will not be supported since it wasn't tested with WCS. That was an earlier version. Once you, you make sure that your versions are supported per the release notes and the dates are fine, there is an extra step to take. Make sure that the MTU across your devices is the same. And usually it should be around 1,500. Your WLC management interface is on the same subnet as the dynamic interface. And, and you can configure that on your WLC. It's the config network mgmt-via-dynamic space enable. And then go ahead and add it to your WCS. Now, last step, really important, is SNMP. As you saw in our first slide, your controller and your WCS talk with SNMP protocol. So after we are sure that we have the correct versions, that our controller is properly set up, we need to troubleshoot SNMP in between them. What is the very, very first step? Well, the very first step to troubleshoot will be your um, SNMP community strings. If you have SNMP version 2 on your controller, make sure that you have the correct community string entered. Or if it's an SNMP v3, make sure you have the correct settings and, uh, and you are able to, 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 to make sure that this works. Now, how are you going to check if this works? Let's move to SNMP reachability. Really, we need to make sure that WCS is reachable from, that your WLC is reachable from your WCS server. There's one thing you can do, besides the logs that will initially tell you, of course, why you can't add it or may give you some hints, go ahead and install an SNMP utility. And let's do an SNMP walk from your WCS server to your controller. You can use utilities such as net-SNMP or SolarWinds or any other that you like. Basically, just make sure you install this on your WCS server. 
go ahead, join SNMP Walk, and, and, and see what you get back. Either you'll get back a timeout, which may point us out to, one, networking issues. You can't reach w, um, your WLC from your WCS. Two, maybe firewall issues. SNMP is not allowed in between them, especially if you can ping your, your WLC from your WCS, but you can't SNMP to it. That's more of a firewall issue. Or you may get answers. You may get your controller to respond. And if you start seeing responses, look at, look at how the responses are done. Do you see a break in the responses, or do you see a long flow of SNMP strings reported back? If you do see um, responses, but still you're not able to uh, add your controller to WCS, there's another setting you can tweak. It's called the max verbine per PDU. And this is a setting for SNMP that you can change under administration of your WCS. In settings, you can change for SNMP the max verbine per CPU. Now, you can go ahead and, and, and lower down this number to a smaller value. And this will increase um, the chances to add your controller to WCS. Those are really the key things to do. Um, you also may want to do, add a packet capture, a sniffer, such as Wireshark, uh, or just do an ether reel uh, on, your, on your system, on WCS, while you go ahead and do an SNMP walk. So then you see what packets are coming out of your, of your server and what packets are coming back. So keep in mind, uh, check out the version of your WLC. Make sure it's com compatible with WCS. Make sure that your MTU settings are fine across your, your wireless network. Make sure that your WCS management interface is on the same subnet as the dynamic one. And then make sure that you have all the SNMP um, properly. Um, so those are really the key things when you can't add your controller to WCS. Another issue is you can't delete your controller from WCS. Well, your, your WLC needs to be reachable when you want to delete it from WCS. If not, try ahead to, to plug it back on your network and try to delete it. But if you can't access any more to this controller and you still want to delete it from your WCS, we can do so from, from the database. In that case, the best is to contact us give TAC a call and ask for help to delete your controller. In any case, for any troubleshooting issue between WCS and WLC, the logs are your friends. And, and make sure that you, um, you, uh, you go ahead and, and get the logs, set them up to trace level, um, do a packet capture at the same time, look at the logs, look at your traces, look at your SNMP outputs. On the controller, Something I, I, I forgot to add here during your troubleshooting is enable the SNMP debugs on your controller. When you're going to do an SNMP walk from your WCS to your WLC, enable the SNMP debugging. It's the, the command debug space SNMP space all enable. Now this command on your controller, turn it on and then do your SNMP walk. So you will also see if your controller receives the SNMP request. All right. Let's move a little forward, and just here I'll, I'll glance through, through location troubleshooting um, quickly so you also have an overview on that. Location, or MSC, um, is pretty much the same functionality. The MSC is the next generation of, of location appliance. Um, to install it and set it up, well, you, you can install it from the CLI, and then you can go ahead and, uh, and make sure that you follow, you know, host name, the time, IP address, and so on. The status, you can use the log server D, status, top, and start, or MSC if you have an MSC. That will tell you if your services are started. And the logs. It's the same thing. It's under WCS, but there you go under mobility, MSC. So 
system, advanced parameters. And there you can find your logging options. Go ahead and set them up to trace if you have any issues with your location server. One main thing you can do as well on your location is uh, reinitialize your database. And for that, the database is the server-eng.db file that you can remove and then start your location back. And this will create a new database that will fix mainly your most, mo most common of your client tracking issues. To recap about documentation, really this is your friend in the wireless world. And there's two main documentation for each of our components. It's the release notes and the configuration guides for WCS, Location Server, and WLC. And now I'll pass the mic back to Dan. Oh, thanks again, Lucian. Before we get started with our live audience questions, the final polling results are in, so let's take a moment to look at those. Okay, it looks like we have a fairly broad distribution of, of knowledge on the, on the call, which is great. I think a lot of folks are going to benefit from this. Now it's time to answer some of the questions our viewers have submitted today. By the way, if you can't stay with us for the discussion, please be sure to click on the evaluation button to let us know how this session met your business needs and expectations. The first 10 listeners to complete the evaluation will receive a $20 Amazon gift card. Okay, let's move to the first question. Okay, question one. The release notes say WCS will work on Windows 2003 server. Will WCS version 6.0.181.0 work on Windows 2008 server? That's a great question. So it, will, it has not been tested basically to work on 2008. Now keep in mind, um, only 32-bit is supported today under Windows or, or, or Linux. 64-bit um, is not yet supported. So you may be able to have it to work on 2008, but I do not recommend you to do so. And it hasn't been tested. Um, it's something you may, again, be able to do, uh, but I wouldn't recommend you to do so because for troubleshooting, we will go into issues. And, and, six, and 60181 was released in February, and it was still not tested on 08. So I don't recommend you to, to do that. So keep on 2003 for now until we release um, a support for 2008. But 2008 will most likely be 32-bit only. There's also a plan for 64-bit to come later on. Great. Let's move on to our next question. Is there any document available that has the list of commands to manage the WCS database? Not that I'm aware of. But I recommend you to um, go ahead and download the presentation today. Go ahead on the Ask the Expert event on the community. Ask questions about it. it it's really something that we don't want you to mess with. However, I want to give you an opportunity to find out how it works and what, it's, what really it is. So hence, I'm, I'm giving you in this presentation the tools to do a query or do an update. But the commands by itself, it's a solid SQL database. So as long as you know SQL, if you have Oracle uh, knowledge or MS SQL or any other um, database background, you'll be able to, to use the commands. And, and again, the commands are SQL commands. So it's, it's, you can find this anywhere on the web and, and go ahead and play with that. However, make sure you do a backup of your database and before you do any of those. Okay, next question. I want to back up my WLC configs daily. Is it possible to achieve this from WCS? Absolutely. If you log in WCS and you go under administration, background tasks, there's one line which says controller configuration backup. So this is by default unchecked. So go ahead and check it and, and look at the settings and make sure that you specify, you know, any, any commands that you may be asked for. But typically this will be backed up in, your, in the FTP folder that you specify during your WCS installation. 
So yes, certainly. And I do recommend you to, to, to back up your, your WLC daily. Okay, next question. Can I downgrade my WCS software to a previous version? No, don't do so. And the reason is database updates. Um, again, we are updating the, the schema of your database from a version to another version, and there's change, changes and optimizations. So a, a next version of a database will not work when you restore it on an earlier schema. And that's really the reason why downgrades of WCS are not supported. So to tackle this down, what I advise you is to make backups of your WCS softwares uh, before update upgrades and just keep them so you have a way to go back if you need to. Okay, next question. What is the max var bind value and what does it do? The max var bind value, this is how many variables will be included in, in, in one PDU that will be sent uh, or received, sent by your controller and received by your WCS, basically. When we do an SNMP walk, for example, you'll see if, if you just do an SNMP walk on any Cisco device or wireless device, you'll see that it's very verbose and there's a lot of information. Now, the max verbind per PDU, basically, you, you tell the device that that you want to receive, le you know, you want to receive smaller chunks of data sent at some time uh, per, you know, at every PDU, basically. And, and, and that will really help fix issues with adding your controller to WCS mainly. And that happens if, let's say, you're over an MPLS or VPN link. Well, decreasing your max bind per PDU will make sure there's no loss of data. Remember, SNMP is over UDP. So we may lose packets. And when we do lose too many packets, you can't add your controller. So really, it's really important to, to get this value down if you're not able to, uh, to add your, your controller to WCS or you have sporadic issues where your controller will, will disconnect and reconnect on your WCS. It's most likely you may be over um, an MPLS or VPN link or, or just in your internal network. Your settings may be done in a certain way where um, you do need to trim this down. Okay, next question. Should WCS manage the power level of access points, or is there a need to manually adjust them? Excellent question. Well, you should, first off, you, you should go with the WCS settings. But the WCS CS settings, keep in mind, they're nothing else but changing the settings on your controller. So whatever power level you set on your controller, that's what WCS sees. So when we talk about WCS to manage the power level of your access points, it's, it's just, it just means WCS will push to all your controllers or certain controllers the power level. Why would you like to change the power level on your own? Well, maybe you have a specific environment, physical environment, well, where you know there's a lot of um, reflections or background noises, and the, the, the decibel attenuation is, is strong. So, setting a higher power level will will have the access point to 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 send a stronger signal. However, this will cost you more because it will use more power. So. By default, I do suggest you to not mess with power level, except if uh, you're running into very specific uh, environments where you have very poor wireless coverage. OK, next question. Can I use both context-aware and WIPS services on an, on an MSC? with WCS? Absolutely. Context aware is to track your clients and the WIPS is um, your, your, your sensor for attacks on your network. And you can absolutely use both 
at the same time on your WCS as long as um, you have the licenses for it. Okay, next question. Can I back up my floor maps or retrieve my map files? Yes, you can. And, and there's two things. First off, when you do a backup of your WCS, it will include in this tar file all your map files, which are nothing else but PNG files. Now, if you like just to retrieve your map files then uh, for, for your floor areas, then you can just go ahead and find the files and save them for you. Um, they are under WebNMS forward slash map images. And in that folder, you will find PNG files, for, with, which are your maps. So you have two things. Always think about the complete backup of your WCS. And you can save the folder, which is map images. OK, next question. Are these same recovery options available on the MSE and 2700 databases as well, since it's a solid database? Recovery options, yes, they are the same uh, type of recovery options on MSC and location. It's pretty much the same database on both. Um, on the MSC, however, since now you have more functionalities, the database will be more, uh, will have more new, newer fields or we will be more developed, um, especially that now you have the IPS functionality, so your database on your MSC will have more fields. However, the recovery options, yes, are the same. And, and, and um, you can apply to both of them, absolutely. OK, next question. The radio coverage area does not seem accurate to the reality. Why is that? OK, so in WCS, you have this um, monitoring of your floor maps where you see the coverage. And, and oftentimes, you may see that it's not really um, what you observe in your field on your floor. First off, I would say make sure that the maps you have are on scale. Um, you know, when you add initially your floor map to WCS, you can specify um, the width, the length, the height of your map. So make sure this is accurate. And also, your map file, well, make sure it's, it's on a good proportion, that it, it, it's really reflecting the reality. That's the first step. Second step, you place your access points on your maps. Make sure that the antenna orientation is selected properly in WCS and that you choose the correct access point make uh, and model. So you can have, uh, WCS can really uh, optimize its algorithm for calculation of coverage. Next, as a third, thing you, you may be able to do to get better representation of reality. And, and here, really, it's about how much time you want to spend to get an accurate, um, accurate to representation of reality. The third thing you can do is play around with obstacles. You can go and edit in your map the thickness of your walls, uh, what type of, of, um, of material your floor is made with. Is it concrete? Is it wood? Um, and, and edit, really, uh, your, your floor to, to tell WCS as much as you can, really, what's the environment. And I will also adjust the algorithms to calculate the noise and, and the rate of signal propagation. Finally, if you do want to get something very close, I mean, exactly as reality is, the last step is to do a site survey. You can go ahead with, with the laptop, with the Cisco Air card, Air card, walk around, and basically take measures of signal. Uh, and that will send it to WCS. And it's called site survey. And this will really, the more, the more probes you do on your floor, the more, the more signal points you have, well, then the more your, your map will be accurate to reality. So there's four things you can do. Make sure your maps are on scale, that your antennas are properly chosen edit your obstacles, and do a site survey. OK, next question. 
what does the performance mode you mentioned on slide 35 mean, and what does it do? And I'll bring up that slide for reference. What does the performance mode do? That's an excellent question. Well, the purpose of performance mode is to increase, um, basically, the, the, the memory that is given for Java, but also it's, it's, to, um, it's to, to allocate a few more resources as well for your WCS server. It's not something that we would recommend you to run by default. It's really something to run when you are in an environment with a very large uh, database uh, because it's not going to work on your Java. It's going to work on the performance between and the interaction between your WCS and your database. So this is, a, I would say, a better way to start WCS by allocating more memory. If you edit this file, you will see difference of settings. And by memory, speaking of memory, I do recall that it changes the Java value, I believe, for memory from 1 gig to 2 gigs. Uh, but it's something that you can go ahead and check if you just try to edit this file. It's, it's a file which is NMS admin. And if you go ahead and just edit it, you will see what it does. So if you're interested to exactly know what it does, go ahead and edit the file. Um, again, from memory, I recall that it increases the Java and it helps on the database interactions, um, and that's 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 pretty much it. But before you even do that, I would say, before playing with performance mode, are you in a situation where you need to improve your 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 performance on WCS? Is your WCS really running slow? And don't forget, start off with making sure that hardware and software you're good and you have, you know, the minimum requirements. Uh, if you don't, even in performance mode, it's not going to help you to improve it. And giving more memory to Java, if you don't have enough RAM already and you don't have another uh, gig and a half or two gigs free of memory, then it's not going to even make sense to allocate this because your WCS may crash. If, if Java takes all the memory, then Tomcat server won't be happy. So. Again, I would say make sure that your requirements are valid. Um, in, increase your Java performance. Um, if your database is too large, do a defrag. And then also you can play with performance mode. OK, I think we have time for one more question. The walls, windows, et cetera, in my imported map don't appear. How can I proceed? OK. so. Walls, first of all, walls are part of obstacles. And if the walls don't appear, well, what type of map are you importing? Is, is your map, uh, for example, a JPEG or an AutoCAD file? Uh, you know, if, if, if your map initially does have um, a, it's a floor drawing with, you know, cubicles, which is the most common one, well, you, you you will mainly you you should be able to see the lines of, of your cubicles when you import the map. Um, if you mean that you don't see the walls, um, are you referring that you you have worked on obstacles and make changes? If you have edited your properties as far as obstacles on your map and change change the wall settings, then those are saved in WCS, but you don't see a change on the on the graph on the floor. Uh, drawing. It's, it's saved in WCS, but you won't see a wall that will become thicker. Uh, as far as windows, well, you, you, it's, it's a floor map. Keep in mind that you shouldn't be able to see windows on a floor map. In any case, if you have further questions on that, feel free to stop by the, 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 the Ask the Expert event, and we can take this um, to a next step and, and really find out if, if you have other issues with, with, your, with your floors. Great. Thanks, Lucian. That concludes the Q&A portion of today's event. Please take a few minutes to complete your evaluation of today's session. This will help us address your business needs and interests in the future. As Lucian mentioned, if you have additional questions on this topic, please log on to the Cisco support community using the URL above. And Lucian will continue to ask, answer your questions through the community site over the next two weeks. We also hope to see you at Cisco Live this year. Each year, thousands of your colleagues make room in their schedules for Cisco Live. 
with an agenda packed with world-class education, training, and networking opportunities, it's the one event that can make the biggest difference in your career. Early bird registration has been extended to April 30th, so please register now at ciscolive.com. Also, please join us for our next upcoming webinar. We'll be covering the Cisco Support website and your software download experience. That's on May 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We hope you enjoyed this live Cisco Support Community Ask the Expert event in Cisco Live and Networkers Virtual, and we encourage you to explore the virtual environment, including the Cisco and partner booths in the world of solutions, the on-demand technical sessions in the session catalog and the blog center. Also, if you have not explored the Cisco Support Community, please take a moment to see all this program has to offer at https colon slash slash supportforums.cisco.com. Thank you to our expert, Lucian, for sharing his expertise with us today. We wish you a great day.